And that's sort of how this league works, right? There's, uh, there's times where a team is clearly on, t on top of the league, like Golden State was uh, for those five years. But, you know, the, those uh, dynasties don't always last, last forever. And, you know, at some point, uh, you know, whether it's injuries or trades or, or uh, you know, free agent like KD leaving or somebody like that, uh, the balance of power shifts. And, you know, last, we last year we, we felt like, uh, you know, the West was wide open. Uh, because because of the injuries and KD leaving, and uh, and really the whole league was was wide open because of because of all that, and uh, we were able to capitalize on that and, and win the championship, and you know, obviously uh, we've retooled and, and come back with a strong strong team again, um, but it's just part of uh, what what this league is is about. You know, there's uh, there's always a balance of power shift uh, at certain points. Okay, we're gonna go with Kyle Do next, please. Hey Frank, um, you talked about how um, you, you like a certain element of randomness in the offense and based on the stats that we have available to us, it looks like you guys don't lean too heavily in any one sort of frequency of play type. Um, how much of that is sort of coaches consciously being like, hey, we've done a lot of pick and roll, we need to do isolation or, or whatever. And how much of it is just, do you trust guys like LeBron to just go up a field to kind of mix it up? Well, I've always empowered by point guards to, um, you know, call call the action, uh, so to speak. Uh, going all the way back to when I was coaching in, in Indiana, you know, I, I just think it's, uh, you know, it just empowers your your player leadership uh, in that regard. And you know, I'll, I'll uh, have the ability to to get our guys in certain actions when I see fit. And um, you know, but the main thing is to play with pace. You know, uh, play with offensive pace. And if you're playing with pace. And, uh, and and you're racing the ball up up the floor, and you're in attack mode. Um, you know you're going to find the ball's going to find certain actions randomly. You know, and that's something that we encourage with our um, with our system here. George Richard. Hey, coach. You guys have an elite coaching staff. You know, with you, Phil Handy, um, Jason Kidd, um, Mike P. Can you just talk about the job you guys have done? You know, with very limited practices. You know, this season. Well, well, thank you, and um, yeah, my coaching staff uh, really does do a great job. You know, they uh, first of all they, they show up with a with an impressive resume. When you when you mentioned the guys you talked about with Lionel Hollins, Jay Kidd, with the the head coaching experience and and obviously the playing experience as well. Lionel back in the day, and Jay Kidd more recently. Um, you know, being a Hall of Fame player. Um, you know, Phil Handy's body of work with. Uh, with his days in Cleveland, here with the Lakers, uh, Toronto, he's worked with some of the best players in the league, and um, you know brings a lot to the table. And, and, and obviously, Mike Mike P has uh, got a great reputation around the league. Uh, you know, for for you know, a being a shooting coach, but but really being a, a basketball coach. You know, and I, th I think that's what he's brought to the table here is not just bringing that shooting dynamic, but um, you know, really uh, looking at both sides of the ball, the prep work. Um, Miles Simon and, and Q Crawford uh, also, um, you know, with less experience, but you know, do a great job with the prep work, with the individual um, work that we do with our, our guys uh, pre-post practice. You know, all these guys are contributing and continuing to move the needle uh, without a lot of formal practice time. Uh, I do divvy up my film sessions, um, you know, so that all of their voices are heard, and I want to take advantage of their experience. And you know those guys, my assistant coaches have done a great job uh, both last year and this year. Last question, Eric Williams. Hey, coach. How has the way that Dennis can pressure up front set the table for the rest of your defense, and how does that spill over to other guys in the floor when he's playing like that? Yeah, well, that's uh, it's sort of a an identity piece with us, right? We started with with Avery last year. Uh, having somebody that's going to pick up full court, uh, Alex would do it at times. KCP, and um, you know it's something that that Dennis does well, and, and it does it instinctually. And um, we've encouraged with him with this year's team. Um, but when your when your defensive point guard is picking up full court, it sets the tone for the whole group. You know, first of all, it slows slows the other team's uh, offense down. Um, you know, in terms of uh, not getting early initiations. But just the energy of it, you know, let's let's uh, let's the four guys behind him, um, you know, that, that we're fighting on that possession. And uh, hey, do you feel like uh, in the year and a half or so you played for the Lakers that you 
you have become obviously the defending champs, but have you taken over the Warriors' perch as the team with the targets on his bat? The, the the kind of the standard of the league these days. Uh, I think when you're defending champs, you kind of hold that you know standard for the league. Uh, I don't say we took over the, the Warriors won a three out of four or something like that. So we don't uh, know. We haven't accomplished that yet, but I think whoever the defending champions are kind of hold that standard that, you know, each team wants to um, become. And, um, you know, we have that target on our back this year of, you know, teams trying to match up to, to beat the Lakers. And, um, you know, it comes with the territory when, you, when you're when you holding the title. So, uh, you know, we've been doing a great job of continuing to do and what we do and get better at what we do to hold that, that title um, and try to, um, keep it here in LA for this season, but um, you know, every night you're gonna get, you know, the the other team's best shot. And uh, you know, we've seen that um, a lot this year with the, with our team. Kyle. Congratulations to your football team. No, thank you, Kyle. Man. I appreciate I that. Um <laughs> first off, before you knew Kobe um, was there something, either a move or maybe an element of his style that that you emulated as, as like a teenager or something like that? And sort of as a follow up, why do you think Kobe sort of inspired um, imitators and, and, and just had this generation of people who uh, wanted to be like him? Um, believe it or not, when I was younger, it was more the LeBron era, so I was always watching him. Um, but I did, you know, watch Kobe um, and his back, I mean, you know, being from Chicago, MJ, and then, you know, watching Kobe, you know, kind of emulate his game and the, the back to the basket turnarounds and stuff. Um, always kind of, you know, stood out to me. Uh, just how, how much create uh, space you create, uh, you know, with just a small turn on your shoulders and your hips. So I kind of just always watch that aspect. Um, but I just think, you know, I mean, we hear it now with his mama mentality. I think that just kind of resonates with everyone, um, you know, in their personal lives as well, you know, not just in sports. And, um, you know, the way he, you know, was on the floor, just a fierce competitor, um, the way he was off the floor, um, such a, a loving guy. Um, I think it's hard for people not to love Kobe and, and not to not see the inspiration that he tried to give to the world. Um, you know, especially you know with his daughters, the way he you know supported them and did so much with them. I think it's just um, it just sets a standard, you know, for you know what everyone try try to become. You know, as a parent um, and for us men, you know, as a man, as a father. Um, as a husband, you know, all those things that he was, you you, you try to, um, you know, look how great he was at those things and try to, um, you know, do the same thing with, with your personal life. Bill? Hey, D, um, kind of going back to the, the Warriors question, um, I'm just wondering, you and LeBron both signed your extensions to um, be here long term. You know, have you guys, I mean, do you think about what that could be and what that you know what that could be by the time you know you guys are to the end of those contracts and what kind of um, I mean dynasty obviously is everyone's goal but I mean what, what you know what you guys can do in, in the three more years? Um, we take it year by year. Um, you know once you start looking too far into the future, um, you start getting blinded by what's in front of you. And you know we we talk about this year how good of a team we have and um, trying to repeat. You know, that's our only thing this year. And then next year, we'll worry about next year and the following year. Um, and then I think he'll be done uh, with his contract. So we just try to take it year by year and try to figure out uh, what we can do to to make sure we win a championship this year. Um, and then after those years, you know, we look back and on it and can, and can, you know, laugh and smile and joke about, you know, what we have accomplished. Melissa Rollo. Hey, D, um, how much do you think LeBron's outspokenness on social justice and politics has inspired and encouraged other guys around the league to do so as well? Um, I think, you know, 
the he's the face of the league, you know. And so when he says when he says something, um, everyone listens, and I think it gives confidence to you know other younger players or other players who are not as outspoken um, to do the same thing. And you know, is is you have a lot more confidence to say what you want to say when you have you know a league who has your back, you know, uh, and you know anybody who has your back in general, you know, when you got a guy who um, you know, backs the players in this league and, and wants the best for everyone and supports everyone, I think that um, you can speak out. And when guys see that, um, you know, Braun speaks out or, you know, Braun says something about any subject matter, he uh, then they feel comfortable to do the same thing. Um, is it took or took? Sorry. Um, okay. Speaking of that, what, um, with what's happened in the past year, what does it mean to you to be able to play on MLK Day tomorrow? Uh, it's an honor. Um, I think in my career, I think I probably played four or five times on MLK Day, and it's always an honor. Usually, you know, being in New Orleans, it was in Memphis, which was a whole different honor. But I think just playing on MLK Day is an honor for me, is an honor for our organization, for our team. Um, you know, like you said, especially when, you know, everything that's going on around the world um, over the past year and then leading to this year, um, you know, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to hear a lot of guys speaking out tomorrow um, about everything that's going on. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about starting a season, you know, tomorrow, um, just make it more powerful. But, you know, for everything that um, MLK did for us, um, you know, did for this world, um, anytime you get a chance to, to play on MLK Day and, and represent, you know, what he wanted all along, um, you, know, it, you know, you couldn't be more happier to, to do so. At least I, 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 I'll definitely be happy to, to play. Sorry about that. Uh, last question, uh, Kari. What's happening, Nate? Thank you, man. Uh, you, you said you looked up to, uh, you kind of like looked up to LeBron, you know, and watched him growing up, you know. So, so what does that mean to kind of like to play with him to this day? I know, like, you know, you said it to the fact that you, you know, you in the NBA, you were a superstar yourself, but what does that mean to play with somebody that you kind of, you know, watched growing up? Yeah, um, it's crazy you say that because when I was, when we were in the bubble, um, he was getting like, accomplishment after accomplishment, breaking record after record. And, you know, me, him, and some of our guys that uh, was was with us was making a joke about how, you know, next he's going to break the record for, you know, most, you know, shoes he's tied. And, you know, it was just crazy thing that he's breaking records for. So, um, and I was on a bus one day uh, on the way to the game. And uh, I can't remember what game it was. It was in the playoffs, though. And, um, I was on Instagram and I saw a post about, you know, LeBron, and it was basically saying that he was top three in, like, almost every statistical uh, category. And uh, I sent that to him, and I sent him, like, this long uh, – I got to see if I can find it. There's a long paragraph on um, about it, and they were just saying, like, I remember when I was a kid going to – you know, driving from on a Greyhound bus by myself, you know, 15, 16 years old, going from Chicago to, you know, Akron for your camp and um, seeing you for the first time. And, and you're such an inspiration to all of us you might not know. And it's just crazy how everything comes full circle. So now we're on the same team battling for a championship. Um, and it was a lot more, like, in-depth about it. But, um, you know, you kind of just hit these moments where you realize, like, the guy I looked up to and had all his shoes and wanted to be like, and now we're teammates, you know, one of my closest friends. So um, it all just comes full circle. And I'm pretty sure he was the same way, you know, with a guy like Kobe and and um, even, you know, not getting a chance to play against MJ. But uh, he probably did when MJ with the words. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, it was kind of like that same feeling for me. And I kind of just told him that. And. It felt kind of awkward just walking to the locker room, like sending a heartfelt message to him. And now we about to go play, and we right next to each other. So like, damn, what is he gonna say? Like, man, you soft or like, we, we gonna see him just before a game. So it was kind of weird, 
But um, 